Sir, you were one of 200 cadets who was Muslim at the National Defense Academy. And you said that the beautiful thing about the military is that you were never cognizant of your religion. Take us back to those years. Well, really, uh, actually, our, after I finished school from St. Joseph's College Nainta, I applied for ND. It was a very good schooling and got selected. And I landed up and uh, it didn't concern me that I was a lone uh, Muslim. Nobody bothered about it. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll tell you a very uh, uh, once one of the fellows called me a katwa. One of your batchmates? One of my batchmates. Uh, uh, that means the circ circumscribed one and the other fellows got after him. Mm. So this was the sort of friendship we all had. Uh, what to talk of discrimination, I always found affirmative action. People were trying to help out. Uh, not that I was a Muslim, but uh, they realized that I was working hard. And so I, and this continued right through my service, right through, never for an instance did I ever feel discriminated against. I always felt that I was one amongst all the equals. I think one of the stories uh, you sometimes share is how at the Battle of Longyearbyen, uh, the, 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 the soldiers who were fighting, you among them, they were a microcosm of our country yes. in, in the diversity of backgrounds yes. that they came from. This was 1971, tell yes. us. Uh, see, uh, my regiment was initially a camel pack regiment. Uh, we got motorized just before the war. Uh, 16 officers, mm. uh, 600 men. Out of the 16 officers, you'll be uh, interest, interested to know the composition. 16 officers, two Sikhs, two Muslims, one Christian, one Jew, commanding 600 men. Uh, and uh, nobody said anything. We were right, fought shoulder to shoulder. Nobody, nobody asked me my religion. Nobody asked me to go to Pakistan. Uh, none of that. Uh, it was a totally different atmosphere uh, at that time. And I'm very, very happy that I lived through 40 years without ever having felt. Recently on social media, somebody told you, General Saab, go to Pakistan. And you said what? Well, <laughs> that already came in the... Tell us, but tell us, tell us. Uh, you know, uh, they said, go to Pakistan. So I said, I've already been there without a visa. <laughs> and uh, after the 1971 war, because after the Battle of Longa, Longyearbyen, we went into Pakistani Sindh and were there for four or five months. So it was without visa entry and uh, nobody said a thing. Now I feel very, very hurt yeah. if somebody tells me to do that. And I tell them, why didn't you tell me earlier yeah. when I was performing my duty for the country? Yeah, absolutely. The military ethos of multi-faith celebration, not tolerance, celebration, the Sarv Dharm Sthals, the Mandir Masjid Gurdwara traditions, the fact that the CEO, the commanding officer of a regiment will take on in a way the faith of his, uh, his men, his troops. These people who are I am a civilian, hu, but I have spent so much of my professional life covering the military, people don't understand. If I want you to explain to our audience, how is faith and religion handled in the forge? Uh, faith and religion, see, uh, religion is a very important facet of a soldier's life. Yeah. But it is your private business between you and your maker. Yeah. Uh, I have served with, uh, with a battalion which had half Muslims, half Marathas. Uh, I was commanding the division in Sikandrava, the Bison Div. And they called me for Eid. I went there. The commanding officer was present. So was the brigade commander, non-Muslims. They stood up with the congregation, yeah. performed the namaz. Not that they were worshipping, they were performing a duty. Yeah. And the same thing when I went to a mandir function, mm. I was not there to pray. I was performing a duty which I felt I owed to the men. So everywhere you find, if it's a, a non-Hindu, he'll go to the temple, sit there. In fact, I used to officiate over the arti and other things. Nobody said a thing. Then why are you asking a, a I was just going to say, I have seen Hindu officers offering namaz. I have seen Muslim officers performing arti. It is between you and your maker. And worship is your intent. Hmm. If you are there on a parade, well, you are there on a parade, plain and simple. 
worship you can do at home and such thing it is between you and your maker i am a firm believer in that